Welcome back, everyone, to the Comic Con podcast. This is season two, episode two. We are filming this, recording this, filming this on January 13th, 2022. It is Thursday night. This will be dropping January 14th, 2022. I am one of your hosts, like always, the Manimal. And with me is my boy, Nemesis Prime. What's up, Justin? What's going on, Zach? Been a busy week. We really haven't talked too much, but we're always bringing some news and some stuff that neither of us know about. <laughs> yeah, you know, so I mean, I, I'm sure we talked about this on past episodes, but like weekly and daily, Justin and I are typically just shooting each other text messages. And like today, I think you shot me like four texts that I didn't respond to because yeah. I was so busy. <laughs> and then it's just like kind of normal sometimes. Like we know that that's how it is, you know, and then sometimes it's like, two or three phone calls a day. It's not like mm-hmm. a random bullshit or like your, your hunts or whatever. Like look what book I got, or I spent <laughs> 20 bucks today and I got all these books and, and then I'm like genuinely hating on you because you, oh, of course you get all these good hunts, man. So, um, but yeah, so we got a pretty good show today. We've got some community stuff we want to talk about. We've got some good, um, TV movie news, some comic book news. And then like always, we are going to finish with, uh, what we're currently reading. But before we get into everything, if you're listening to us, you're probably listening to us on one of these platforms, but just to shout them out, you can find us on Spotify, Apple iTunes, Google Podcast, Anchor FM. You can also find us on our social media, uh, the Comic-Con Podcast on Instagram or Nemesis underscore Prime or Milton underscore the underscore Manimal on Instagram as well. Or if you want to send us an email, voice message, you can find us at the Comic-Con Podcast at gmail.com. So those are all the places you can find us. If you don't know, if you're a new listener, if you're an old listener, you're probably sick of us talking about this. But hey, message us because you aren't doing it. So now you know where you can find us. No excuses, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. <clears throat> so we have some community news. It's kind of kind of community, kind of not. I mean, it's, it's relevant to the community. People are interested. Um, there has been some recent changes to CGC. Justin, why don't you kind of lead us off with that? Yeah, so of course we all know that uh, CGC is growing. They're constantly getting more books and more cards and more everything, you know, being graded over the past, you know, two years, realistically, because I remember when I was sending books in 2020 and they were coming back in 30 days and those were modern books. They just cracked they did the do- video games thing too, right? Yeah, that'll be starting sometime this year. No official date, but that's uh, that'll be coming down the pike. So, you know, with that being said, we, you know, we've seen a price increase last year. And there was a more recent email that went out that said that as of uh, middle of January, that their prices are going to be increasing again. And of course, you know, immediately take to the community of everyone bitching and complaining (laughs) about how. You know, well, their prices are increasing and their turnaround times are the same. And, uh, you know, here's my take on it. Now, of course, yes. So the prices are increasing. Their turnaround times are the same, but they are clearly used. And we talked about this last year with a company that's that bought them, well, not bought them, but, you know, is investing a lot of money in them that, you know, they have to have they have to hire people. So right. you can't keep you can't hire people at what the current prices are and expect to get good results. So listen, if the book is going, if a modern book is increasing, whatever, two or $3 and their standard or economy is going up a couple dollars, it's called economics. Like it's supply and demand. And especially in this day and age, everything is increasing. So right. why wouldn't the price of a CGC book to slab increase? Like if you're a, especially if you're a dealer or a vendor and you send books for like, let's just say me, I said, I give books to my local comic shop owner and he sends books out to CGC. Of course he should be charging me the extra fee that CGC is now charging because it's, it's an increase to him. Like why would my payment to him be the same as it was previously when clearly CGC is increasing? Like, right. And of course now with, if they get more money based on these books, they're going to be hiring more people. They're going to be hiring more graders and more, customer service and uh, encapsulation and the whole nine yards. Like it just needs to be done. I just don't understand why that people, I have no problems with it, but all over Instagram, people are just taken to it. Like it's like the worst thing in the world. So (laughs) I'll play devil's advocate a little bit because I, 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 because I agree with you on, on, on your points, but I do think the other side has some valid points as well. So, I mean, obviously inflation is crazy right now. Right. So Mm -hmm. 
things are going up anyway. Um, standard cost of any kind of production material is up. And I couldn't tell you if plastic is or like whatever material they use for the encapsulation, but I imagine it is. Everything else is up. Why wouldn't that be up? So like I get all that. But I think some of the complaints, right, are first off, let's start with the, the obvious one, the turnaround time. So it is frustrating when turnaround times are so horrible. In this past year, they were horrendous at certain points in time. I mean, let's just talk, I mean, not talk about it, but let's just bring up your Shang-Chi second appearance situation you had. Like their turnaround times were just garbage. So it just rubs people the wrong, the wrong way when it's like, okay, you're charging more, your turnaround times are crap, you know? And I get it, like you gotta hire more people, you have to have the money. But at some point, CGC probably needs to um, take a hit on their part to accommodate the the collectors and then increase. So it'd be like, okay, look, like we're we're gonna go out of our pocket to hire and raise, and then until we get to a point where we're good to go and we're kind of caught back up and things are moving steadily, then we can raise the prices. So I think that's one thing is obviously the turnaround time. The second is there's been a lot of complaints over the year, and I'm sure this shit will never change, but like the grading process, you know what I mean? In terms of like quality control. So mm -hmm. we're seeing books come back, just horrendous backwards pubes, uh, facial hair, <laughs> horrible grading stuff. I mean, you see the horror stories on it, like the wrong label on a book. You know, it's very, very frustrating, especially for some people. Like I would say probably the majority of people, correct me if I'm wrong here. The majority of people sending to CGC are not dealers, are not vendors they are collectors i think there's probably more collectors that are sending for their own personal collection so they're invested emotionally in said book to to receive it back and when it comes back poorly or crappy it, it's it's a blow man it really hurts you know wouldn't you agree mm -hmm. yeah i agree on that it, it's definitely it, it, it hurts the community but i think you know, someone like you who doesn't send too much to CGC, right. like even if you sent maybe if you sent 50 books the entire year to CGC, that's probably a lot for you. Oh, yeah. Uh, myself, I, I probably have over 200 books at CGC with multiple invoices mm -hmm. throughout the year. And you think and I'm just I'm just someone who's an investor and collector at the same like I'm both like I send books yeah. to sell. I send books to, to actually keep in my collection. But then, yeah, then there's the vendor people who send thousands upon thousands of books throughout the year you know there was a point last year where the grading service stopped for cards like they stopped that you couldn't send any cards anymore like is that something that cgc cgc should have done like even take like a month and be like listen we can no longer accept anything based on our current process so we need to catch back up because what was happening and everyone and everyone kind of knows this if you send in the stuff to cgc it was you would send stuff to cgc it would just sit in their warehouse it would never be put into the computer system right now they're at least caught up where like i just sent something over christmas break and it got inputted into their system you know like a week later because i shipped it out it got there and it literally was there you know in their system so at least i feel more comfortable knowing that it got delivered knowing that it's in their system before it was just like, well, it says it's delivered to the location where I need it to go, but that's it. And then you have these people who are like, books got delivered last year and they still haven't been graded. You know, same thing. Like I was having books that were delivered in like July, August, September that weren't graded, but then books that got delivered in November or December, October, I should say, already got scanned and got sent back to me. It was just like, well, I don't want these books. I want the other books because those are the ones I was trying to sell at that specific time, not the books that I'm sending it now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think the, I think it falls in the middle. You know what I mean? Like people, people need to understand that prices are always going to increase. And we, that's where we're at right now mm -hmm. in society and economics, like you said, but at the same time, I feel like CGC needs to meet in the middle as well. Like they can't be oblivious to the like, anger towards CGC the past like year or so. And the fact that they don't address it or anything like that, <clears throat> I find that to be an issue. And I think that, I think that bugs the collector, you know, like both you and I know a lot of people who have switched to CBCS for multiple reasons, whether it's turnaround time or customer service alone, you know? Mm -hmm. um, it's, fu it's funny. Uh, I was actually speaking to my LCS owner today 
And he recently just put out his entire, I wouldn't say entire, but the first 25 Fantastic Four books on CGC mm -hmm. uh, up on eBay. And one of his books was actually a blue label, even though it said uh, cover trimmed and color touch. And he listed it, and but in the descriptions, he literally said blue label, but with restoration. So it's just like, how bad is CGC's customer right. service or their quality control that lets a restoration book go through and it's a blue label. So what, and he actually told me that, and I knew about this about a week or two ago when he listed it, cause I saw the book. And then he just told me this today was that I guess someone must've contacted CGC and then CGC actually contacted him via his eBay page and says, send this book back to us. We'll give you a hundred dollars. And also the book back in a um, CGC, you know, restoration and he just kind of left it alone. No way. Why would you do that? Like because of their mistake. As long as he's as long as he is honest with it in the sale, in the mm -hmm. sale and saying, yeah, like, he was. Oh, man, here it is. And I, I wouldn't send it back. Why would you send it back to get a restro? Like, no, that's your mess up, your mm -hmm. your F up, you know. Like, what was it in one of our group chats, ma'am, this week? Someone was or on Instagram or something, someone posted a picture of a book that said like cover detached. Do you remember this? And it and everyone was saying like it should have came back a 0.5, but it was like, a oh, two. yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? Book. What was that? Yeah. Oh, man. What book was that? I know? I it was like an older, I want to say Silver Age book, like a pretty key book. And um, CGC graded it like I can't remember exactly. Let's just say like a 3.5 or 2.5 or something like that. But even in the description on the uh, the label, it says like, cover detached pieces missing inside not full book which 100 percent is an automatic 0. 0.5 yeah so, i don't know why that got that that grade that it did uh i'm trying to check our our group chat i know that was posted i in, feel but... like it was did dennis post that maybe uh, i can't seem to find i found the 0. 0.3 i didn't think they gave away 0. 0.3 as they were talking about <laughs> uh but here yeah, it is yeah. i found it i found okay. it it was All-Star Comics number four. They graded it a 4.0. And the grader's notes say, centerfold missing. So incomplete book, not noted on label. Choose full top of cover, front cover detached, which is a common defect, also usually listed on label. And piece out left top of front cover. So this post says, at best, this is a 2.0, three grade due to the detached cover alone. But missing an entire centerfold, two pages, would make it a 0.5 incomplete universal grade. Mm -hmm. so for whatever reason cgc put this as a 4.0 man with pages missing that's crazy <sighs> yeah that, uh, and what are they I going mean, to unless the person thing? that's like, hey, doing ahead, it is go colorblind ahead that, go ahead and send that back so we can give it a resto 0.5 like hell no dude like why would i do that <laughs> You know? Like, is the person checking it like colorblind so they don't see the difference between the blue label when they're grabbing it and the green label? <laughs> colorblind? Can they not count like page count? I mean, <laughs> they're just like, oh, we also cannot count. We're missing two complete pages, four pages if it's a centerfold. So you got back, front, middle, back. I'm talking four pages missing. That's sad. That's crazy, dude. So, I mean, it's stuff like that. And obviously, obviously, mistakes are going to be made and things are going to slip through the cracks. We get it. But you're also the premier, like you're the premier brand. You're the one that everyone counts on. You're the leading person in encapsulation of graded books. Like, in fact, so much so, which both you and I disagree, or agree on, but disagree with everyone else that there should be no value change in a CBCS book versus a CGC book. Mm -hmm. Graded is graded. If they're graded by the same people, trained the same way, it should be irrelevant what company grades your book. So... Um, if you're CGC and you're the one who's like the top dog, you better be better than everyone else, man. You really just better be better. So mm -hmm. anyway, a little CGC rant right there. Right. So, I mean, you know, everyone talks about these kind of things, but this isn't, this stuff's kind of is important to the community. Like people really bother, you know, especially oh, like people huge. like you. Yeah. You know, we, we didn't talk about it last week, but it was all over Instagram and social media. And I think it just, it's something that everybody has an opinion on. Mm -hmm. For sure. Okay, so do we want to move into um, TV movie news? 
Uh, let's talk about some Pokemon. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Tell me this story. <laughs> All right, everybody. So this this information just dropped earlier today, and I know this is not a Pokemon podcast, but of <laughs> course, I just thought this was insane, and I watched the video. So uh, Logan Paul, if you don't know, he's a big YouTuber. You know, he had, what did he do? He did, like, some MMA fight where he fought someone. I forget. Who not MMA, was. boxing. A boxing, that's what it was. So... He bought a $3.5 million set or sealed case of Pokemon first generation off of one of his friends who paid $2.7 million off of somebody, whatever. So the case is six complete boxes of Pokemon Gen 1 first editions. So he posted this video today, January 13th on YouTube. I lost $3.5 million on fake Pokemon cards. So couldn't have a seven better person. Oh, it's, it's hilarious. So it's a seven minute video. Of course, we're not going to play it here. Just go and check it out. But, you know, we'll give you the, the quick summary. So he ends up having BCC come in. BCC is the card service that actually authenticated that this was real uh, last year, right, right before his other friend bought it. So they're um, unopened, correct? They're unopened. It's sealed in the original box, just like if you bought like a sideshow piece or mm -hmm. even something from like Diamond. Uh, they verified that the box itself, the box itself was legit. Like the way the the label was, it was you know it was weathered. Um, just you could just tell that the box itself was weathered. It didn't okay. look like it was a brand new box, and they sticked the new label on it. And they taped the the tape was new. Like you could tell that it's been sitting around for a while. So mm -hmm. that part was fine. Then they open it up and they take a look at the box before they even take out any of the boxes. They they start looking at the packaging on the cover of the box and they could see that it looks a little faded. So that was already, mis you know, kind of like fraud number one, because it was just like the way the Pokeball looked was it wasn't like a, a nice circle, clear, crisp. It kind of had like this, you know, some, uh, some pixels. Okay. So they take out the, they take them out and they know without even opening up the boxes that they're fake. And they're like, you can't because you can't even see the box. You can't even see the card packs. So they get out. He opens it up, gets the six boxes. So he's like, all right. He's like, I got six boxes. Maybe they're just something else on Pokemon cards. Right. They legit open up the one box and they're G.I. Joe cards from the early 90s. Nice, dude. Yo, it was insane. Like <laughs> not even like current Pokemon cards. They're legit G.I. Joe cards. That's awesome. So the fact that like. I, I don't even know. I, I can't even imagine. Like, I know he's like, you know, my friend will give me back the 3,500 that I paid to him because he's a good dude. But now it's like, does it go 3,500? You mean 3.5 million? Uh, yeah. 3.5 million. I'm sorry. Does it go back to the guy who, you know, bought it or, you know, bought it? Or does it go further back to the person who sold it to his buddy for 2.7 million? Like, did he know that it was yeah, fake? Right. Or like who he... is, the, who's the original perpetrator? Exactly. That dude made out, but I mean, he's probably going to be, you know, okay. So let's say you run this scam, right? Let's say you run this scam and you sell these books for, or these cards for like, whatever. Okay. Let's say, I don't even know. Let's say the first fraudulent sale is $100,000, right? And you're like, oh, hell yeah, man. That's awesome. And then it goes on and you hear that your same book or your same cards, I mean, come down to like 3.5. Are you like upset? <laughs> you know, like, oh, dang it. Like I could have had the 3.5 million sale. I think so, you know, just from real quick looking at the, some videos online, like this is a huge hit to the Pokemon community, like to the card market. Like that just goes to show you that like these people and it's been done on whatnot people out there, you know, these big guys who are on the, you know, on uh, on whatnot, they're buying these sealed boxes and then going to be opening them up pack by pack on whatnot, selling the packs like. He, he literally he said he went from 11 sealed boxes, generation one, first editions down to five. So those six are completely fraudulent. He still has the other five. And now they're nothing like so 2.5 million just like thrown out the door. Did he open the other five or no? Yeah, they were all G.I. Joe. Oh, so all <laughs> 11 boxes are G.I. Joe. No, all six boxes in the case. So oh, okay, he has yeah. he has five other boxes just separately. Okay. Okay, yeah. I get you. <laughs> Dude, see, well, you know what? Like, honestly, don't get me wrong. 
that sucks being fraud but it was also if you've got someone who can take a 3.5 million dollar hit it's it's jake paul or logan paul i was logan paul logan paul i don't feel bad for him but on the same time like if you're one of these people who's like i mean this is basically what is this is the equivalent of a grab bag right a grab bag mystery box except you know, i don't think it's like that i think it's like buying uh buying a af-15 or like <laughs> right i mean price wise yeah you're right but and you're you're you assume that like for sure it's gonna be but you buy those pokemon and they could be worth like what nothing or what's okay so let's say the oh no the pokemon million. cards are, are ridiculous now like, so even generation one, I mean, let's say first edition would, shadowless, would they, like Charizard, you still get, you'd still get some of your money back or at least value oh my wise. God. You figure six boxes untouched by human hands in a way, like send that mm-hmm. stuff to PSA or CGC to get, you know, you could easily, I mean, even if they were legit, that box literally could double in value without even opening up the packs. Like so if they it, were legit boxes. If if I was to like do that, I wouldn't even open it. I'd send the bo- send the boxes unopened to CGC or PSA or whatever, and be like, "Open these, grade them." You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, well, oh, man, like I said, sad. couldn't couldn't have happened to a better person. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so that's our that's our Pokemon news on this new Pokemon <laughs> podcast that we are going. You never thought you never thought we'd be talking Pokemon, did you? Right, never. Unless it's right. a movie or comic book, that's the only other thing I would ever think about. <laughs> But um, okay, so let's get into some of the stuff we usually talk about: movie mm-hmm. and TV news. Um, what do you want to start? You want to go ahead? You had something. Yeah, so uh, we'll go with some TV news. So of course, uh, and we're obviously this week we also are going to talk about our first three episodes of Book of Boba Fett. But with that, brings Star Wars news. So this past week. There's some rumors going around. So over at the direct.com, there's an article saying that Star Wars actress might have accidentally spoiled the new Bo-Katan Disney Plus show. So, Ooh. of course, over on Twitter, uh, Fennec Shan's Ming, uh, Ming-Na-Wei Wen, who plays, of course, Fennec Shan in the Book of Boba Fett and The Mandalorian, she tweeted and then it was deleted saying, Woohoo, thrilled for you, Katie Sackhoff. Congrats, girl, Bo-Katan Star Wars on Disney Plus. So... Uh, Katie Sackhoff, of course, has been voicing Bo-Katan in both Star Wars Clone Wars, Star Wars Rebels, and was also the live action actress in Mandalorian uh, Season 2. So, with that being said, do we think a Bo-Katan spinoff show is coming? You know, I think I think it makes sense on multiple levels. So, one, I think, and I'll say this right now, I think in terms of her and between her Katie Sackhoff and Tamara Morrison, I think you got more star power in mm-hmm. Katie Sackhoff as you do as a, like an actor. Okay. It's like she's de- she's definitely been around more, a better actor than Morrison who plays Boba Fett. So mm-hmm. one, I think she can carry a show. Like, so if you were to decide on like, okay, can this person carry a show? Well, I'd be like, yeah, dude, you went Morrison for Boba Fett. I think you can do Sackhoff for Bo-Katan. Um, like you said, she also has mad history with the character. Then I think the other thing to keep in mind is we've already lost a Disney Plus show, Star Wars wise. We had the uh, what was the Republics the what was, what was it supposed to be called Knights? Not Knights of the Republic. Ac- um, Acolytes. No, the one with um, with uh, what's her name from Mandalorian who got canceled. Um, oh, the um, yeah. Oh, God. I know, right? It was it <laughs> the Republic? It was something. The Republic. Yeah, the New Republic. The New the, Republic. Was it uh, New Rangers Repu- of the New Republic? Rangers of the New Republic. Yeah, that's it. So you had that cancellation. So you know that that's a slot that they have open. So they're like, okay, why not just go to Bo Katan? Why not? You know, more Mandalorians. Obviously, people love the Mandalorians. I mean, look, dude, like all your Disney Plus Star Wars shows are now currently Mandalorians. I mean, people love yeah. it. So. It makes and it's, sense. It's man. perfect because there's such a gap between the end of Return of the Jedi to The Force Awakens that, you know, that now this is where we are. You know, people are always, you know, obviously with like the Obi Wan show, which is before Episode Four. Mm-hmm. There's the Cassian Endor show that's, of course, before, you know, in between Episode Three and Episode Four. Like, I feel like that time frame is done. Like, I, I'm right. tired of seeing that time frame. Like, I want to see two characters what's that happening. you know die anyway. Yeah, exactly. Like, we know what's going to happen in a way, you know, Cassian Endor kind of says like he was kind of like 
rebel scum or like just like a pickpocket. I can't I can't think of what he says like in Rogue One, but he was like, kind of dirtbag. Yeah, exactly. So for him to go from there to what he was in Rogue One to spoiler alert, he dies. Like, <laughs> do we do we really care? Like, it's really all it is. It's just going to have, you know, first appearances or cameos of people that were like, oh, my God, we can't believe we saw this person. And maybe that person's in the right. future. But like with Katie, like, I think it's perfect to have another show that's based around this timeline because Book of Boba Fett is from what we know is a limited series. It's one season and done. I'm sure it's not because of how well it's been doing, but I don't know. I, I, I I'm, a, I'm interested to see it as far as comic book appearances. She only has one comic book appearance for Bo-Katan. So if this news is true, I think this book is going to skyrocket to insane limits. Isn't it not even really like a comic book format? Isn't it something different? Yeah, it's those little Dark Horse Digest books. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's the only appearance she has. She has no cover appearances. That is the only book that she's in. Hmm. Interesting. Um, Yeah, I think it'd be cool, man. Like you said, we need some more stories that can like operate outside of like the Skywalker stuff and like in anything in that realm in between the original trilogy and the, the, the sequel trilogy very much. So that's a lot of room to play with and to grow. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think they're leaning heavy into it because I mean, if you do the Mandalorian stuff, look at like book of Boba Fett, look at the Mandalorian. If you do um, the Katie Sackhoff, Bo-Katan thing, I think they realize the syndicate in the crime world is the way to go. Like that is right now such a rich universe within the universe that has not really been tapped and people like. So you can play in that all day because the Mandalorians, I mean, that's really kind of what they were in the Rebels. They were kind of like good guys, kind of bad guys. They're kind of in the mm-hmm. middle gray area. Like you can play in that so much. So many and stories. I always feel tell. like right now it's just like, do they really just create these costumes for like, one or two episodes <laughs> right, right like as badass as they are it's like do you really just be like well here's an introduction and then that's it right yeah so that's cool so kind of on uh star wars news also we talked about book of boba fett we're going to talk about it a little bit more but um also tamara morrison also said he's open to playing captain rex and other clones and i mean this really should be no shocker you know what i mean like whether we see him as captain rex or commander cody um or any clone period you know it's cool to know that he's very much in the star wars universe and we can see him show up in multiple realms i mean like i said this guy's not like known for being a really great actor or a well-known actor but I mean, he's going to make his money right now just playing any kind of damn clone in the Star Wars universe. I mean, this guy's going to have like 14 roles if he wants to. Um, hey, he could show up in Endor. He could show up in Obi-Wan. Right. He can play himself again in uh, in Mando or mm-hmm. Boba Fett. Yeah, so it, it's great, man. So I think that's cool, too. Um, like we say, whether it's Marvel, DC, or Star Wars, the more the merrier. Keep coming with whatever. If it If it works, awesome. If it doesn't work, oh, well little one and done season i'm sure we'll get something they never mess up so bad that we don't get something great from it that can't be spun off into something else you know what i mean like Mm -hmm. one of these characters so um we will come back to more book of boba fett here a little later do you want to just go right into it should we no let's let's finish the news and then we'll then we'll we'll actually get into it because our reviews sometimes maybe could be a little long so okay um Okay, so I have a um, a Marvel Disney Plus news. It's kind of following something we talked about last week as well. We were talking about Ironheart and Riri Williams, and we mentioned that rumored villain it could be Ezekiel Stain, the son of uh, Obadiah Stain. Um, but now there's also talk that there is another villain who's kind of been rumored to be a bad guy in the MCU that not many people have, like, we keep kind of hearing his name, but he hasn't been placed anywhere. But anyway, so the villain of the upcoming Disney Plus series is described as a white man in his late 20s as charming, magnetic, slick, and oily, as well as handsome with an athletic build. The character description further notes that this mystery man is always working at angle to his own advantage and has a crew working for him. So based on this description, there's a lot of speculation that this could end up being Parker Robbins, aka The Hood. Now, that would be really cool. The Hood is an awesome character created by brian k vaughn 
who went on in the Dark Reign like era of Marvel yep. Comics to really be cool and kind of have awesome powers, um, kind of crime syndicate. But at the same time, I read that description, and it could also mean like oily, magnetic, slick. Could be like a businessman too. You know what I mean? Like it yeah. could be an uh, Ezekiel Stain character as well. Um, mm. But you know, I, I, either one of those I, I think would be great, dude. I, I would love to see the hood show up somewhere. Um, he's like that. You know what he is as a villain? He's that street. He's a street level villain, crime boss, but with powers, which we don't see very often in the MCU. You know what I mean? Like you don't see like the kingpin doesn't have powers. Exactly. Um, yeah. What are some of the other like street level characters? Well, he's even like a character that I could even see show up in like a an Echo, like in, in the Echo yeah. show. Yeah. Yeah. Like it, why not? Because if he is like a street level character, you know we. You know, we talked about this that they need more street level characters. So right. Something and they need ones with about. powers too. And he he's a little OP, yeah. to be honest with you. For a street level character, that dude is OP for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think it'd be cool, man. I, you know, I love that book. I got a couple of copies of that book myself. Um, it's hard to find, it's pretty low print run, the hood. Yeah. The that first one through six, it's great, man. It's a really good read. If you can't get your hands on the actual book, you should you should try to read it somehow. But it's really, really good. Um, I'd like to see the hood. I think he's a cool character. So that's things because I actually had a nine point eight of that and sold it for decent money. But do it for what I paid for it, then what I sold for it is like, it's not bad. But that's all true. I mean, that book is definitely going to skyrocket because that's yeah, you know, that's always part of those <clears throat> books that you know have these mini series that nobody cared about. Well, it's a know, max. Like, it's max also the explicit yeah, content. Yeah, that, so yeah, yeah exactly. So it's something that no nobody really, you know, most children or early teens didn't pick up. It was really more for the adult side. So the 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 hood CGC nine point eight on eBay. There's some selling for like five hundred dollars. Yeah, I think I sold mine for like four between oh, like good. four and five. Yeah, oh, I definitely I, I made good. money without a doubt. Yeah, it was definitely in, in the few couple hundred dollars when I sold it. It's just I, I could see that book then hitting a grand without a doubt. Right, especially because it's so hard to find in low print run. But, black cover without it you know it, yeah. it's definitely t it's it gets a tick and that's it you're done with the 9.8 so and you got a little bit of news too yeah so uh of course you know and this is basically something that we've talked about previously and you know zach, zach has his thoughts on this but over at bleedingcool.com we got some dc news so dc comics cancels joelle jones wonder girl early with issue number seven so even though issue number eight was solicited um we previously heard of course that they were possibly looking at a yara flora tv show but that didn't happen so with that cancellation i guess maybe no one cares anymore about the wonder girl uh comic book so of course issue eight was supposed to come out next month but it looks like it's concluding this month with issue seven and there's going to be some backup stories over in the uh upcoming event book called trial of the amazons wonder girl one and two so you know, I know Zach. You you had a couple copies of her first appearances and sold them. Yeah. Um, um, what, you know, what do you think about this? Because this is a. I, I enjoyed the early Wonder Girl stuff. I thought it was a good. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's someone new to bring on. You know, we haven't had a new uh, Amazonian in quite a while. You had Cassie Sidmark with the Young Justice. You have Donna Troy with the Titans. You have. Uh, Wonder Woman, uh, you know, doing her thing with like the Justice League Dark and the multiverse. But and you had, you know, the new one, you had the Aura Floor. It, it's just thing, you know, it, I don't know what's going on. DC just doesn't know what they're doing. So here, here's my kind of opinion on this is like, so you, you talk about DC and you got your, your, your main three, right? Wonder Woman, Superman, Batman. Mm -hmm. And at the end of Dark Knight's Metal, Wonder Woman sacrificed herself or whatever and ended up dying heavy metal or whatever it was. Um, but there's that gap, right? So there's that gap and you, ca you can't let the character fall. So then you introduce new characters. And I've never found that to be the solution. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think you do that. I think if you, if you kill Wonder Woman and she's gone and she wasn't really dead, people are probably like, yeah, oh, she's not really dead, <laughs> but she's gone from like, she doesn't have her ongoing, right? Okay. She's not mm -hmm. in Justice League. She's not really a mainstay character. Let her go away. Let her go away. Let people like want for and clamor for it and want it back. Don't come in with some 
B version, C version of the same character. And that's what they did. They brought in Yara Floor, then they brought in Nubia, and then they put Queen Hapoltia in the Justice League. And all these are just, they're just Wonder Woman knockoffs. Mm -hmm. And you piss off the fans that way. You know, it's like people like, eh, you know, okay, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll try out Yara Floor and they don't like it and sales go down, obviously. So I think if you're going to kill a character or take a character out of circulation for a while, do it. Like own your shit, take them out of circulation and let, let it be gone. So that when you can bring that character back, it's like, boom, they're back. You know, like Marvel yeah. did the same shit with Wolverine, like they killed Wolverine and then put old man Logan. Yeah. So it's like, oh, he's an all new guy. Is he though? Like, isn't he really? He's just like an older guy. You know, it's the same fucking Wolverine. So yeah, I, um, that's a constant thing. Like you said, with the, with the big three, I mean, Batman was dead for a while. And of course I get it. Like Gotham needs a Batman. So it's like, well, here's Dick Grayson is, as Batman. Which is a little or, different though. Cause he's yeah, it's, it's different because they, yeah, well that's, what, it's a little yeah. different with him, but then it's like, the Superman in the nineties, like with the death of Superman. And then you just introduced like four new Superman to be right in that world. Like you couldn't just have like Metropolis without Superman and just have like Supergirl there or like the Superboy of at that time. I don't really think there was a Superboy. It was really the new yeah, introduction. Wasn't, wasn't it the, uh, wasn't it the nineties one who, or was that when he showed up? Was the that's one when he the, showed up. The nineties one was like, okay. but that's what it is. Like, why didn't you, you could have just had Supergirl as like, in action comics like just her have her be the main right. character for a while like you didn't really need to mm -hmm. bring in four new supermen and then eventually have his return like you could have just had her for a while yeah it just it, it also takes away from like the impact of the deaths like they do these big stories where these characters die and then mm -hmm. they're immediately replaced by like i said like a bum version of that character and then eventually <laughs> that guy comes back or that girl comes back and it's just like it's pointless. Like, then don't kill anyone, dude. Like, literally don't kill any characters if you're just going to do that shit. So, um, but like you said, I had a couple copies and I made some money off them. So I was happy, man. I mean, I think I had like three or four copies, sold them each for like 15, 20 bucks. So bet. Uh, good good for the manimal in that situation. Yeah, because um, now they're just going to be back into the back issues and uh, no longer like a wall book to actually who nobody cares about. Right. For now. But like... <laughs> Who knows? It could be just like, you know, the Riri Williams stuff and that were dollar books and then come back and become hot books, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. So now let's get into, or did you have another article? I can't remember. Uh, we do have the Spider-Man article. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, of course, over at Marvel Comics, they are talking about bringing in a new team and a reboot for Marvel Comics Spider-Man over at uh, a bleeding cool.com. So, you know, with this news, you can't just continue the numbering. You have to relaunch it. So uh, bleeding cool in Marvel, April, 2022, we got ourselves, we got some, we got, actually, I, I like this team. So you got writer Zeb Wells and you mm -hmm. got, of course, John Romita Jr. Who's, you know, no, no, he knows how to draw Spider-Man. Right. No slouch. On yeah, the without a doubt. So, and not only that, but it's also the 60th anniversary of Spider-Man. So Zeb Wells, uh, he's done, you know, a bunch of things. He just came of course, off the Hellions, man, which exactly. I love. Exactly. Yeah, he, yeah, he's he's great. I mean, he's done the Hellion stuff. He's also done TV shows, and you know, he's not just someone who's done the comic books. You know, he's done a lot of the comedian stuff, like he did um, Robot Chicken and stuff like mm -hmm. that, and um, some some of the other like cartoony things, but. He did like Carnage, the USA, which is hilarious. And of course, he's also done uh, Venom Dark Origins, which was badass as well. But like you said, most currently the Hellion stuff. So, you know, he's not, you know, and he's not, you, he's used to doing Spider Man esque type characters. So, with that being said, of course, a new number one for his 60th anniversary leading up to with uh what they're calling with the rose white rabbit and signs of the green goblin so of course in april we will be getting a new number one uh with a landmark with bold work showing the new spider-man over with john Romita jr what does that mean that means tons of new variants coming out for amazing spider-man number one um uh, what are your thoughts on this latest relaunch for amazing spider-man well, look, it can't be worse than the Nick Spencer run, which um, I didn't finish it. I tried to start it and I, I, I couldn't do it. Um, 
I just thought it was kind of garbage. Um, I know a lot of people hated on Dan Slott, but I thought Dan Slott did great things with Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. Um, granted, don't get me wrong, there were some slumps in Dan Slott's writing as well, and like his tenure as a Spider-Man guy. Um, but uh, sorry, did I miss this? Is it is it Peter Parker or is it Ben Riley? Because I know they're no, kind of doing a whole thing. No, it look it is going to be Peter Parker. Okay. Um, I mean, they did show kind of like a preview of, I guess it's going to be like the lasting issues of the current amazing spider-man run mm-hmm. and it looks like peter parker does mm-hmm. something that you know nobody knows what he you know he even says he's like what did i do um it says what did peter do i should say and it's like a four panel thing it looks like just an explosion there's no one around him except for himself so um he's got his mask broken off so i don't know i don't know what's going to happen but Probably something to make his life shitty like he always does. Something to make him a bigger loser than he already is. Yeah. So, um, you know, of course, you have, like you said, you had the Ben Riley with the current Amazing Spider-Man. But uh, something's going to happen that's going to bring Peter back. And uh, with that being what's said, you got Zeb Wells and, and John Romita Jr. So uh, be prepared for your Marvel solicitations for April and tons of variants. Yeah, that'll be cool, man. I mean, I doubt I'll check it out. but. I think it's always it's it's always nice when they have new creative teams come in. You know what I mean? Change it up, see what's up. I don't mind the renumbering as long as you keep the legacy numbering when like the big key issues come out, like the hundreds and stuff like that. Yeah, because so. they're at like eight eight eighty something around there. I think yeah, they're getting the close to nine hundred. Uh, yeah, for yeah, sure. Like I don't know. You know what? I'll, I'll probably end up check. I'll end up checking it out just because yeah, like you said, like the Nick Spencer stuff, and we've talked about this last year. I remember we had a. Uh, I forget who sent us a messaging asking us about the the current. Yeah spider-man run but that's what it is like spider-man's not it wasn't good like this current era was just terrible for spider-man so yeah. new team possibly you know doing something better uh, you know what did you think of hellions because he did hellions so i liked it I, I loved it and you were talking like b to c team characters bro i mean the, the biggest characters in there were havoc mr sinister and i can't even say psylocke because that's not your betsy braddock psylocke so Mm-hmm. Don't get me. I mean, I think Havoc, in my opinion, is an A-list character, but he's really not. Um, <laughs> so I, I thought he crushed it, dude. When you can crush a title with like B to C team characters or like list characters, mm-hmm. that's awesome. Now, that being said, a character like Spider-Man, those characters can be tricky, man. Those legacy characters like Batman, Spider-Man, the ones that people are really, really invested in. I don't know. That, that that's tough man so you, you kind of got to give some people some wiggle room but i find spider-man if i mean from someone who doesn't write at all and says this totally not knowing shit about writing but like <laughs> i would figure spider-man would be one of the easiest characters to write i mean he never changes he's always a loser he's always quippy he's always fighting the same animal guys i mean mm-hmm. it's probably the hardest part is probably coming up with a new idea yeah like on you know an original idea with spider-man so we'll see man i like zeb wells i I like him as a writer so all right yeah uh so again april amazing spider-man number one coming out so uh before we get into what are we currently reading let's talk about some book of boba fett so we are going to be talking spoilers so if you have not checked it out the first three episodes skip over this little section want to start it off man sure you know um it's good um I think there's there's some slow parts. I think for sure the 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 first episode was a little slow in terms mm-hmm. of like his his backstory and showing like how he climbed climbed out of the Sarlacc pit, which was cool seeing it happen. Um, obviously, there's been a lot with the uh, the Tuscan Raiders, which was pretty cool the past couple episodes. Um, it's definitely. I'm just hoping that we get to a point where his backstory and the current story like m- merge and matter, like what happened in the past ends up mattering in the present um oh you don't like the boba verse which is what i'm calling it kind of oh, like the right? arrow verse <laughs> yeah oh kind of like God, you know how like green arrow yeah, was always sure. like that's all they do in the episodes was always like it's current yeah. it's back to like before it's current that's literally that's how good, i feel that's yeah. good dude i didn't even think about that because <laughs> the arrow verse is definitely more dramatic when they do the switches <laughs> you know the back and forth back and forth but um it's cool. I, I would just want more of the present because the presents where the cool shit's yes. happening. You know what I mean? Like the, the stuff with, um, I, I, I love her character. Finnick Shand is so great. And I don't feel like they're utilizing her at all. She's mm-hmm. just like standing around and like 
has comments here and there, but she's not getting the game time I wanted from her. So mm-hmm. what are your thoughts? Well, uh, you know, again, the first three episodes, we've had uh, a big first appearance in there. Something mm-hmm. that, you know, with the, the first appearance of a new Wookiee bounty hunter, Black Chrysanthemum, it's crazy. I knew about that last year. There was talks about it, him coming, and I did not pick up any copies. Like, yeah. I picked up a few copies of Darth Vader, one here and there, and I didn't care enough. And now it's like the book is blown up. Right. Uh, I, I I've think had some cop- first... copies come through also that I just like got rid of for being a hot Darth Vader number one, but not for the real value. Yeah. So I think the I think exactly like you said, the first episode or two is is slow moving, um, but then it kind of picks up. I do, you know, there's a lot of speculation that people were banking on these the Tuscan Raiders to be more of like a Darth Kraid or a Shal- um, a Shalard Fett characters from mm-hmm. the uh, the dark horse stuff like legacy characters i don't think that's happening now from <laughs> what we saw right. in episode three right uh you know everybody was banking on the 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 mayor to be somebody else from star wars comics so that book completely went down the down the toilet it's the kind of like a dead spec oh who was that i don't know if i've heard that one who did who was so the, the uh the, you know who the mayor is the guy yeah. with the those yeah, guys yeah. so there's a prior in that galaxy star wars galaxy's edge number one there's the first appearance of this character who is looks like him and everybody was thinking that that's the character so of course there was like galaxy's edge number one like didn't sell well but it went to like a second printing and had like a one in ten design variant and the one in ten design variant was up to like 150 or 200 dollars. the authorian print right? pre- huh the authorian yeah yeah so of course that got hot because that's who everybody thought it was, but it was just like, it can't be him because they're not on Batu, they're in Mos Espa. So it's just like, why would you think that this is the character? But whatever. Uh, I like I like listening to, to people and their speculations and then all of a sudden their dead specs are done. Like it's <laughs> right back to the Marvel world. Like we're right, right. back at the MCU. But as far as the show, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like I I, I, I had this conversation with, a vendor at the local show this past weekend i feel like people that are older than you and i like mm-hmm. you know we're in our 30s i feel like people that are in their like 40s and 50s are in love with boba fett because like they grew up with him when they first saw him in the movie theaters mm-hmm. and right. in like the holiday special and then you didn't see him forever and then i guess if you watch clone wars you're like oh you get to see him as a kid and then all of a sudden he got brought back in mandalorian and it was just like your dreams came true because it was something that it has such a cult following and he's finally here and everybody loves it for us. I feel like it's our Darth Maul because like people who saw Darth Darth Maul in Phantom Menace wanted to know so much more. He was such a great character and we didn't see him for years. Right. And then he got brought back and they made him a badass. Like that's a good point. And his storyline is like, and his storyline is perfect. So it's like, You know, younger people like the Darth Maul, older people like the book of Boba Fett because of the legacy of him. I like Boba Fett, don't get me wrong, but I don't know. Like, I don't know how I feel about the show until it starts going Mm -hmm. a little bit more. And we're kind of like halfway through the season. I've never had much uh, like a much like invested in Boba Fett. Like, I mean, like you said, I think you and I are right on the same page where it's like, I like him. He's a cool character but I've never been one of those Boba Fett groupies or like people who are yeah. like, Oh my God, Boba Fett. I need more Boba Fett. Like you are right. I never even thought about it until you just said it right now. I am definitely more of a Darth Maul. Like if you'd have done book of Darth Maul. I'd be like, bet, <laughs> you know, like yeah. over book of Boba Fett. But um, no, that, that makes sense. And it, it's a good show and it's, it's cool. Like, of course it's opening up doors to other things like Bra- black Chrysanthemum. Um, the twins was really cool seeing the huts. Like we were talking earlier, I mean, it's now opening the door for this whole syndicate. We got to see like live action pikes, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, everything who, that we've never really, everything that we've ever read or seen in cartoon format is finally, you know, is here in like a live action. Like you said, the pikes, them talking about going back to uh, Malhada, uh, mm-hmm. Spice, like that's something right. that's big in like Clone Wars and Rebels. And, uh, and in this past episode, uh, obviously, Black Chrysanthemum opens up Dr. Afra. Um, 
they spoke about the the rancor and how the witches of Dathomir. Like, yeah, that was cool too. When did we out. ever hear the word Dathomir come up on live action? Like, right. So it just plants seeds. It's killing it on Disney Plus. I'm sure people are going to be super sad when this ends, but maybe we'll get some news like in a couple of weeks. And if we don't get any Star Wars news in a couple of weeks once this ends, May the 4th will be right around the corner and we'll have something because we have nothing after this. Like nothing, no hard confirmations of when anything is starting. Just when's Mandalorian season three start? Do we know that? Uh, filming. Filming. Hopefully the end of the year, if not the beginning of next year. But, you know, gotcha. we still have the Endor show. We still have the Acolytes, Obi. which is moving. Uh, Obi-Wan is wrapped up or almost wrapped up. So Obi-Wan might be the next one we get. I would think Endor because Endor was announced and was filming at D23 hmm. or the Disney Investor Day two years ago. Gotcha. Oh. Well, in Ahsoka. In Ahsoka. And Ahsoka. Yeah. But I think that's not coming out this year. I think that's coming out next year. Okay. Yeah. It'll be interesting. So actually, Endor is scheduled to release in mid to late 2022. Yeah. So maybe that's the next one. I'm hoping. Yeah. I have a, I am hoping on that one too. So cool. That's our mid season Book of Boba Fett review. Of course, we'll do a full season once it's over and done with. Maybe we'll get a big Star Wars connoisseur fan here. Uh, yeah we'll get a third party to come in and talk the boba definitely we need someone here who's a huge knowledgeable about all things star wars maybe we'll even get like a someone who loves boba fett big time Mm -hmm. so perfect person oh you have one yeah i know someone cool okay all right so what do we got wrap let's wrap it up like we always do with uh what we are currently reading so um you want to go first yeah, absolutely. So uh, we finally are starting to pick up books this month. Uh, a lot more stuff is coming out after I said last week that I felt like nothing was coming out over the past <laughs> couple of weeks. But uh, my pick of the week this week, uh, I cannot get enough of this series, this Wastelanders storyline uh, that they've been doing these one shots. Uh, I talked about it a few weeks ago with the Hawkeye book. Uh, this week, Black Widow is just awesome. So you have of course time frame it's the old man logan storyline where the villains are they killed off all the heroes but with this issue you have it's down in florida you have basically the lizard uh (laughs) and he runs the the zoo down in kissimmee florida so if you're if you know kissimmee florida is where basically uh the disney parks and walt disney and disneyland is so uh of course it's all like swampland and it's not the Black Widow that you think. It's Yelena Belova. So, of Ooh. course, um, I guess that's kind of a spoiler. But, I mean, you find that out pretty early on because you see the grave and it says Natasha Romanoff. So, basically, it's got uh, Yelena Belova. And I'm sure I, I get why they chose her because of how popular she is right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, she kind of goes and is, she's trying to find somebody uh, that the the lizard has, you know, kept up with prisoner of him and it's really interesting because it's a back and forth it goes from the current times and then it goes back to her kind of talking about her hanging out with her sister but i i thoroughly am enjoying this this current age because again it's something that you don't need to know anything else about like you could just pick up these one shots and right. they they don't mean any they're not going to mean anything in the overall m you know marvel comics but it's just cool to see like what could have happened. Like again, what happens if the villains win? So, you -hmm. know, you get some aim soldiers in there and you get like an armor powered guy who looks like captain America, but he's not. Uh, I just, I just liked it. I think with the, the current hotness of Yelena Belova, uh, this episode, this issue is perfect for anybody to pick up and just read as a, as a one shot uh, issue. Yeah, I need to I need to check those out because I read the I mean, obviously, I read Old Man Logan. I read the Old Man mm-hmm. Hawkeye series and Old Man Star Lord. Um, and they're all one shots, right? There's like six of them. Yeah, these new um, ones are the you know, the one. Yeah. shot. The only one I did not read it, but I have it is the Doctor Doom. OK, yeah, I'll probably check those out at some point. I do like that universe, too. It's fun. Oh, it's it's so. perfect. I, I can't. I, that's probably I know we talked about this on our uh last episode or two episodes ago for uh 2021 but if you ever get a chance to read the old old man logan storyline mm-hmm. 
that's a storyline that everybody should read in it's Marvel great. comics. Yeah. Both the both the original Millar during mm -hmm. the Wolverine run and yep. then the, the solo as well. Oh, the secret the Secret Wars one? No, no, no. They had a 50 issue ongoing. Oh, there's that one too. Yeah. Well, yeah. that yeah, the, the Secret Wars led into that ongoing. That's yeah, right. right. But yeah, yeah he right. came over, he blended over from Secret oh, Wars yeah, into yeah, the definitely. mainstay universe. Yeah. Yep, yep. Cool. So what, about you? Um, what do you got reading? So I got I got two things I want to talk about. One, I'm I just gotta say. I, it took me a while to get to it, and God damn, you were right. Silver coin, I got one through seven of those. I think it's right, seven out. It was, yep. it was awesome, dude. I, I fucking ran through those books super fast, and they were really, really cool. Um, trying to think which one my favorite. Your one, your favorite was the video game one, right? Uh, the video game was good, and the casino one. Or, I, the I don't casino know, man. One there's the good. casino. There's the future the the girl yeah i wasn't crazy about that one it was cool yeah. but i liked the first one dude i liked the guy the guitarist okay i yeah, thought that yeah, one yeah. was really cool um but man it, i'm excited to see it's funny because like you said you know the, there was, it was just gonna be five issues and you can tell on like the fifth issue they were like telling you the origin of the coin and then it was doing so well they're like well, why don't we just do a couple more why don't we do five more you know and it's just fun to see like the different writer styles as well um, the common themes like the crow in the background and everything kind of like, mm -hmm. um, it's fun, dude. I'm, I'm really excited for eight, nine and 10. I'm honestly kind of thinking like part of me was like, as I was reading this, I was like, these might be books that I could, I, I would try to heavily invest in because we talked about this when I think either last up last week or another week where I could see these being picked up for some like ongoing, you know, twilight zone type show like you could yeah. do something like this like well because what was it wasn't uh ice cream man got picked up by some what was it uh quila oh god i don't even think i can't even think of the uh the name of that on quibi uh, or, quibi yeah quibi was going to be that's where it was going to be but unfortunately it didn't go yeah um it's got like a black mirror type of thing you right. know because every ep episode of black mirror was different so like with this it's again it's always that the silver coin is always the center but it's mm -hmm. always different and it's a horror thing so like yeah. to really throw this on any type of streaming service would be would be awesome but i'm glad you picked it up i'm, I'm glad you enjoyed all the oh uh, yeah the it was really so far. it was really fun oh the, the like the uh the camp one where the girl's killing all the people too it was, <laughs> it was crazy dude <laughs> but uh so that was a good one another shout out because since i've I'm not going to talk about it very much, but a shout out because I've kind of talked shit on this for a while was uh, I really enjoyed finally Star Wars High Republic Eye of the Storm. I thought that was cool. Mm -hmm. um, the yes. origin story of Ro Marchian or Marchian Ro mm -hmm. um, and like the Nile and everything. I thought that was very interesting. It's going to be one, three issues, four issues. Five, I think it's five? Yeah, five issues. Yeah, I think it's five. I think that's and kind that's of what they're sticking with. Might be the coolest High Republic book I've read so far. So um, I thought that was cool. Yeah. But then I think my pick of the week is going to be uh, Savage Avengers number 28. Oh. So it's the last it's the last book in the Savage Avengers run, which if you aren't familiar with, was kind of like the main foray of bringing Conan over into the Marvel Universe. I've talked about this before. Um, they brought Marvel or Conan into the mainstay Marvel Universe, had him going up against Kulan Goth and had some of the most savage Avengers kind of team up with them, people like Wolverine. Brother Voodoo, Punisher, Black Widow, uh, Juggernaut, Magic, Doctor Strange, Venom. Awesome characters. Awesome, awesome characters. 28 issues. I think it's actually 31 issues with some tie-ins in an annual and like a zero issue possibly. But um, really fun run. Ends kind of in a good setup for future Conan storylines. Kang shows up too towards the end, which is really cool. Um, hmm. Thought it was awesome. Thought it was a very, like, really good concise story i mean could have been shorter but uh -huh. they very much had like their plan in mind and i and i think they started it and got to where they wanted to go with it so yeah savage the savage avengers run really really cool cool run awesome that's that's different to see king <clears throat> kind of show up especially in, in that oh and he has some he has some ties to conan man so hmm. it's kind of cool it was kind of cool but um yeah so I think that's it for this week. Um, same kind of show we always do. We're trying to do some new stuff this year. Um, obviously, these first two episodes are very much similar to how we usually do things, but we got some guests planned, some things coming up, like we said. 
Yep. But um, just kind of starting the year off a little right and getting into the, some artists. Hopefully, getting some artists. Uh, yep. Hopefully next week, uh, we would have had a would have had one of them on this week, but uh, of course conventions are going. So you know we're gonna try our best that you know when we can get them. Um, so just a real quick story before uh, I I kind of give you a quick story. So funny funny thing is I was shipping something out to somebody who bought something from me on Instagram. And I mm-hmm. logged into my USPS account, and all of a sudden it said I owed a dollar and eighty five cents to somebody. Okay. And I was just like, I was like, maybe did I? And it's in like priority mailbox. I was like, did I put a priority mailbox for someone on whatnot? So I checked my last two sales, and it wasn't that. And then I went to the details of this dollar eighty five that I owed the the postal service, and mm-hmm. it was something I shipped out in October of twenty nineteen. I was like, are you kidding me? I was like. You're coming after me for two dollars, bro. Literally, they, they can't stay open, dog. They need every penny. I was just like, I was like, is this not going to get delivered to this person's house? Like, I don't even know what I sent this person. It was from, I don't know if it was like a Lord's auction or a, like an Instagram sale or like I don't know what's going on. <laughs> well, oh, I can't you paid believe it, the, the postal scumbag. service came after me for two bucks. And well, I you're a scumbag. Just, here's the thing: was I, I'm a scumbag. Yeah, I couldn't buy. I couldn't purchase a new um, label for the person I needed to send something out to unless I paid for this dollar eighty five. Damn! So they held you hostage. Yeah, basically. That's crazy. Yeah. So that's what all I got. Cool. Well, oh, that's... what not sell Friday night? If you're oh, listening to this early enough, Friday night, nine o'clock Eastern. What not sell? Nemesis Prime. Yes. Make sure you follow him. So that's all we got this week. Season two, episode two is in the books. And uh, we will catch you guys next week. Later. Later.